Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has launched Gemini 3 Flash. I did the initial testing video on it in yesterday's video, and the results were quite good. The maths, riddles, and questions like that are a bit hit and miss, and so are the complex questions like chess autoplay and Minecraft Kandinsky-style clone. It does indeed pass when you try even harder and with multiple regenerations. So, currently, after re-evaluation, it sits at the 20th position now with 47%, which is about a 7% improvement over the last evaluation. Great nonetheless. But I didn't make this video for that. I wanted to test it on the agentic benchmarks to see how well it performs on my app building and editing tasks. Now, how should I go about using it? Because Google's official implementations include anti-gravity and Gemini CLI. So I tested both of them. They're both free. It's instantly available in anti-gravity for free, while on Gemini CLI, there's a wait list. So there's that. Anyway, let's have a look at the results as well. Let's start with the Go TUI calculator this time. So I tried it in both Gemini CLI and anti-gravity, and, well, it nails it when used with anti-gravity. It's very well made. It's quite awesome. It follows the elements correctly, the states work well, and the calculations are also quite good. But on the other hand, Gemini CLI's generation is quite bad. It doesn't look very good, and the same goes for all aspects of the app. It's very half-baked. So, not a very good generation. It's crazy to me how bad Gemini CLI is getting lately. The agentic contraption used to be good, but it is falling down in quality very quickly. Gemini Flash, from my look, seems to be heavily dependent on the agentic contraption around it. If it's not good, then it won't really work correctly. Anyway, now let's look at the Kanban app in Svelte. It requires things like database setup and stuff. And again, Gemini CLI is pretty bad. It's extremely bad. It looks like it was made in the 2000s or something. It is really very bad. The functionality, however, works, so I can't really complain about that part. But the UI and stuff is really bad. However, Gemini 3 with anti-gravity is on a whole other level. This generation is, like, better than Opus, in my opinion. I don't know what's going on in anti-gravity, but it's nothing short of sorcery. I mean, look at this. It's so well made, so polished. It looks like I'm using some really thoughtful design. Opus is also good in this prompt, but this is some sort of sorcery. This is so good in this prompt. It's insane, and it's free. I mean, what is this? The main thing that I think makes the difference is how long the agentic contraption can go on for. Gemini CLI gets stuck a lot. It doesn't go on for long and isn't made to test the stuff. But anti-gravity literally went on for, like, an hour on this prompt with Flash and literally nailed this prompt. I think Gemini Flash is really good in this aspect. It retains context well and is better on hallucinations as well as tool calling. I guess the LSP support might be at play here as well. But I mean, why would the front end be really basic if that's the case? It's really awesome. I believe there's also some system prompt at play, because I think that anti-gravity forces it to use shad cn, at least in the system prompts. So there's that. Anyway, then comes the Tari app, and none of them work in this. It gets confused as to how to write the code because it starts a Next.js app and then adds a web view to Rust, and it's very confused as to what it should write. The same also happens with Gemini CLI and so on. After this, we've got the Movie Tracker app, and this one is kind of somewhere in the middle. The home page doesn't work. The search sometimes works, while sometimes it doesn't, and the header doesn't look good as well. The one from Gemini CLI doesn't work at all. So there's that. Now, the Nuxt app 
as well as in the open code task. It doesn't do well, which is interesting. It happens with both the variants here. This makes it score the ninth position when you use it with anti-gravity, while with Gemini CLI, it is a whole lot worse, at only the 21st position, which is really bad. I think the Google products are really overlapping here. First Project IDX and Firebase Studio got all the love. Then the love shifted to the Gemini CLI because Claude Code was all the rage at the time. After that, now anti-gravity is here, and it is getting all the love and free tears to onboard users. But it pains me to see how much less updates and less love Gemini CLI and Firebase Studio are getting. Firebase Studio is kind of scrap at this point. There's no real update that it is getting for the last three months. I believe that it had really good potential, but it was all sent to waste. Anyway, coming back to the main topic, Gemini 3 Flash is a pretty good model, considering everything including the costs. It works well in agentic contraptions. It has the habit of going overboard with instructions, which can be devastating in many places. It also doesn't know a lot of languages and frameworks. So if you try to use it with a kind of niche system, like Tari, even though it's not that niche, it still generalizes Next.js syntax as general React syntax, which makes it produce quite wrong and unfixable errors in places, because the whole foundation just gets wrong. So, yeah, if it works, then it can be wonders. But the probability of it continuing to be better across multiple projects is pretty slim. It is good at front-end, so I can maybe replace this with the Gemini 3 Pro model for front-end. I'll do that and report back my results about it as well. So there's that. I find it useful for a ton of capabilities, and especially considering that it will be free at many places, not just Google products, then it is just going to be an insane value for most. Coding-wise, it is great if you just stick to basics, but if you deviate here and there, then the performance trajectory will go down fast. So that is something to keep in mind. It currently performs best in anti-gravity, in my opinion. There's that. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.